I think I've already mentioned several times that The Fablemans was one of my favorite movies of last year. And that was a surprise to me, because Spielberg hasn't exactly been hitting lately. I, I think uh, stuff like Ready Player One, War Horse, Bridge of Spies, it all feels kind of obligatory, like expected. But uh, So going into The Fablemans, I kind of had low expectations and was blown away. It was maybe my favorite Spielberg movie ever because it just felt so immensely personal and raw and full of personal truths and, and experience. Uh, it felt like a movie he needed to make rather than one he just had to make because he's a movie maker. You know, it felt like he had a compulsion to make it. And that's one of my favorite things in art. When you're looking at a piece of art and it felt like the artist would explode if they didn't make this, you know. <laughs> and, and I truly felt that. And it made me cry numerous times. I wanted, like, I was with my mom and stepdad because we watched it over Christmas break. But uh, man, Christmas break, I, I'm not in school anymore. What's the break from? Life is just nonstop now. <laughs> but um, uh, anyways, I, I remember at the end of the movie, I'm like, God, if I wasn't here with like my mom and stepdad, I would just cry for 30 minutes. It's one of those such special kind of feeling movies that I'm just like, ugh, this is tearing my guts out. But since seeing the movie in comments and reviews and everything, the more negative reaction to things, I've seen the term self-indulgent thrown around quite a bit. And to me, that's such a strange criticism of art. Like, well, what is art other than indulging in yourself? It's indulging in your creativity and your taste and your experience and your emotions and your life and sharing that so others can indulge in it too and, and find the universality in the, your own specific and create an artist audience soup and, you know, in that artist audience soup is my favorite moments in art, whether it be a comedy and you're just like gelling with somebody's personal sense of humor or something immensely personal and you're crying because you're like, whatever this person is, the, whatever part of their soul this person is sharing with me is communicating to some part of mine. And to, to come away from art by an artist that's about, strictly about themselves seems to be when the term self-indulgent comes out the most. When it's literally like in the Fableman's case, it's pretty well an autobiography. I'm sure many liberties are taken, but it's pretty well Steven Spielberg's life. So in the most literal sense, he is indulging in himself because it's a one-to-one -one biopic or whatever you want to call it. But how that is a bad thing is kind of confusing to me. I guess the, the, there could be levels to what people are actually saying. I think they might say there's a lack of self-awareness if they felt like, you know, uh, if an artist was indulging in themselves and it came across as like a uh, disconnect with who they actually are or, they, or something. But I, I feel like the Fablemans and many of the movies I've seen self-indulgent leveled against are very honest and self-critical. You know, wh whether that be like a creepy Woody Allen movie, which, you know, has a lot of to it, but it's like, dude's being honest, <laughs> you know, and, and like, at the very least, if I see a movie, I want to feel like the artist is being honest with me. And the closer one gets to directly sharing themselves, the more obvious that honesty becomes, whether it's there or whether it isn't there. And, um, you know, something like a Vincent Gallo movie, like uh, Brown Bunny. People hated Brown Bunny. Uh, not everyone, but a lot of people. But that movie to me was devastating because it, it felt like Vincent was staring into himself and allowing us to, to uh, be audience to that. And uh, perhaps this video is a little self-serving because I have made several immensely personal works uh, and I'm sure people have called them self-indulgent at some point in time. But to me, I, I'm just creating what I love to see, and that's I love to see when an artist just puts themselves out there. Like John Cassavetes, one of my favorite filmmakers of all time, I, I felt like he was laying it all on the line. He was literally making stuff with his wife and bearing their love together on the screen. And, and what a beautiful, bold, brazen thing to do. And to me, if I came away like, Ah, uh, too much of himself in there. I would, I like, I don't get the, I, I guess my problem with this video, I'm like, what does it mean? What are you saying when you call a movie self-indulgent? You're like, the artist put too much of themselves into it. 
But that is like describes every great work of art, you know, as like the artists poured themselves into it, whether literally or through their, their craft or through their their style. The, it's all a, a expression of oneself and the best art I think has the artist front and center, whether it's obscured or not. And um, I don't know, I, I love movies that are so directly personal. You know, may, maybe the closest thing I could see to being called self-indulgent is something like Kava Zahidi, who makes these immensely personal films about his life. And they're usually meta narratives that kind of deconstruct his own, uh, you know, marriage, his own this and that. And uh, perhaps the, the art comes before his life and starts to affect his life a little. And I could see that being self-indulgent in a way where the indulgence in oneself is affecting oneself in a way that to the audience may be uncomfortable or may make it feel more phony because you realize the art is for the art's sake rather than for the, uh, <laughs> the well-being of the artist's sake, I guess. Um, but even then, I think it makes for interesting art, so I don't know. I, one of my things I always tell people if they're going to make a film or this or that, if they're curious what to make a movie about, I'm just like, make it about you, you, your life. You're an expert on you. Like that's at the end of your life, all you, you could study piano for a hundred years and still not be an, the best expert on piano. But you, no matter what, you're going to be the expert on you and what this experience was and what it was and sharing that experience. There is this universality in it. You know, it doesn't have to be one to one. Like I watched the Fablemans and it's like, sure, my my mom didn't have a Sammy that she ran away to. My parents got divorced much younger, but I could still relate. I'm not like hitting a wall because the specifics are different. So I'm like the, these feelings, these emotions, these wanting to be somewhere else, this the seeing somebody you love and care about and not knowing how to help them or knowing what they need does not well, the thing that they need will hurt you. That's a hard thing to come, come to head with. And uh, the movie communicates that beautifully. And, and yeah, it's just it was a really special movie to me. And uh, I, I hope Spielberg makes something else like that before he croaks, because uh, <laughs> I really loved it. But anyways, that's about all I had to say about this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Love you guys. I hope you have a lovely day, and I love movies. Bye-bye.